Hello everyone, this is a description of Empire Game. In this game, you start with nothing, no people, no sciences, no culture, and you build up an empire step by step. Your objective is to get the highest place possible. How you do that is by either one, people agreeing upon the places, in which case, let's say you have three people, everyone agrees someone's first, therefore they're first. The second option is you killing everyone else, therefore you're first. And the third option is <clears throat> for you to uh, be obviously ahead. Meaning, if you are an industrial superpower, someone else is only five people hiding out in a cave, since they're hiding in a cave, you can't really find them, you still win, even though technically they don't agree, and technically you did not kill them. So that is the premise of it. Again, the goal is not necessarily to win first, but it is to win as high of a place as you can on average. Meaning if you, you know, either have like a 10% of chance of first and most likely you're going to lose, or you can get second, obviously second's a better choice. Even if it's a 50-50 shot between fifth and first, probably better to just go for second. Okay. So, <clears throat> every turn in Empire game, you get to do two of these four things. The things are person, culture, culture, production, boost, and science. Okay, so person simply adds one person to your empire. If you get culture, it adds some cultural aspect to your empire, or it adds some genetic aspect, meaning you can, you know, let's say you want your people to be taller, or you want to change their skin color, or something like that. Then there is production boost, which temporarily makes your empire way more productive economically. And it's usually useful if, let's say, you're about to have a war and you don't have enough guns and you need to make a ton of guns very quickly. And then there is science, which gives you, you know, scientific progress. So since you start out with zero people, it's very important that you do person the first turn. And then one of these three things. Now, production boost doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So pretty much it's person and then either science or culture. Now, the next turn, again, you're going to want to do person, so you have two people. Assuming you can't find another empire to breed with to create a person, because you need two people to create a person. In this game, people are always the correct gender whenever you want to do something. Meaning, if you want to have your two people breed, it's always going to be male and female. Then, after those turns, it becomes a lot more diversified in what you can get. Now, each of these categories has its uses. Person, after the first couple of turns, since your empire is obviously not going to be super small, the most effective use is, let's say, you need a military general that you can control. Because when you do person, you have 100% control over that person. Whereas other people in your empire, they might throw a revolution on you. So that is the uses of person. Now there are also uses of culture. Here are some very typical cultures that people do. But there is a list a full extended list of cultures as well. So you could do warrior, which adds one to your attack and one to your defense. You could do defense, which adds two to your defense. You could do attack. You could do populate, which increases the speed at which your people breed. You could do a whole assortment of other things. Uh, including um, happiness to prevent a revolution, bloodlust to make it so your people are more okay with conflict, so you, people don't get too unhappy when you're in a war. And there's many, many other things you can do on a more extensive list. Sciences work as some sciences being prerequisites for other sciences. So, the first normal sciences that people do, and this is, you know, typical sciences. People obviously do strategies that aren't this, but 
gathering. Stone, which essentially means stone masonry. Then there is twig. And then there is, yeah, those are the main ones. Now there's other ones. You, some people do string the first turn. That's semi-common, but not very common. Now, some people, this is much more rare, do something like human anatomy the first turn, or education, or something like that. But those are less common. These are the main three building blocks, these three. And string is occasional. Now, there's also sciences that are created from those, so next level after gathering, you could do planting. You could do medicinal plants, which isn't super effective, but, you know, it, it all depends on the circumstances. If your people have, you know, I don't know, just basic medicine, I suppose. Uh, after stone, you could do, like, uh, stone brick. So you know how to make good bricks out of stone. And then after that, you could do walls. From twig, you do stick. From stick, you could do spear. But then the key is that they mix. So if you wanted to do tools, you know, all you would need is stick to do tools. But then let's say you want a stone sword. So then you need stone and you need tools to get the sword and the stone to be able to do sword, but it's actually a stone sword because of that. Now, stone sword's kind of an odd example because stone swords aren't really used, actually, in history, but you could, you know, do a, a, a stone pickaxe, for an example. And there are endless options in this game, though, because these aren't the only sciences that exist. These are merely the beginning ones. It starts out a bit more restrictive, but you can do literally anything. Like, let's say you want to have a uh, slingshot or an Aztec paddle sword, if you want to have a, you know, a mace, or you want a short sword, a long sword, you want to invent bronze, you want to invent copper swords, you want to invent... Literally anything is an option. You can industrialize, but of course you always need the prerequisite sciences. So this is basically a description of all the options you could do. There are many different strategies. You could bunker down and try to industrialize. You could try to attempt to get guns, which is very difficult because before guns are mastered, people might kill you. But once you master them, you're going to have an insanely big advantage. You could go for, you know, increasing your science production by education. You know, there's all sorts of strategies. You could try, you know, Vietnam-style guerrilla warfare where you go into a jungle and you set up traps and such. I mean, there's virtually infinite possibilities. So this is just an introduction to this. Hopefully you have learned some about the possibilities in Empire Camp.